Hey guys, uh, last time we went to the lake, we got ready to load the boat up on a trailer and I noticed I had a broken bunk board. Um, it's not a huge problem, but it's something that you definitely want to get taken care of as quick as you can. And uh, we got a holiday weekend here, three day weekend, it was a great opportunity to go ahead and take care of it and get it fixed. Uh, the process is really pretty simple, I mean if you're the kind of guy that can read a tape measure, run a skill saw, I mean it's, it, there's no reason to pay somebody else to do it for you. Um, <coughs> the carpet is a pretty important part of the process. You want to get a really good carpet, something that's going to last a long time, something that's going to hold up to being wet, and, uh, and still protect your boat. I mean, at, at the end of the day, that's what the purpose of the carpet is, is to uh, kind of cushion where your boat's sitting. This carpet here I bought from Bass Cat Boat Store. Um, Bass Cat's got probably the best carpet in the industry. And you know when you compare to what you could run down to Lowe's and buy, it was well worth the money to go with a better carpet. So uh, as far as the lumber goes, uh, just regular. I went with treated lumber this time. The lumber that was on my trailer before, on a skeeter trailer, uh, it wasn't treated. And uh, you do have to take some precautions when you go with treated lumber. Uh, your, your standard hardware that, that you know you would use, such as bolts and lag bolts and stuff like that aren't going to work because the chemicals that are in the treated lumber um, it will eventually eat away at those at those components so you do need to go back with stainless steel hardware which is a little bit more expensive but not too bad and uh, it's well worth the money believe me when you start looking at the longevity of how long this is, this is going to last you versus if you go back with just standard untreated lumber um, so I know a lot of people that's done this with treated lumber has had a hard time finding lumber uh, without knot holes or you know that was good two by fours. And so what they ended up doing was uh, buying two by tens and then ripping them down on a table saw to where they would have their two by fours without knot holes and stuff. I was pretty fortunate. I had to do a lot of digging and uh, I was able to find enough lumber that was treated in two by fours that was good enough lumber to use for what I'm doing. So I didn't have to get into the, you know, digging out the table saw or anything like that. Um, use stainless steel staples to uh, fasten your carpet, you know, to your boards. Um, well, the way we went about this was the last time we had the boat off the trailer when I realized I had a broken bunk board, I went ahead and took all my measurements in. That way I could put the boat back on the trailer carefully without tearing it up. And when I got home, I already knew what I had to do as far as the size of my boards. As you'll see, these have a 45 degree angle on the end of them. <coughs> Excuse me, don't ask me why that's there, but it, it was on the uh, on the factory boards and it didn't take any longer to go ahead and cut these at a 45 and, and go back to where they were. Um, I suspect the idea there, because this is the back end of the boards, I suspect the idea there is as your boat slides up the trailer, uh, that's probably why that angle's there. Realistically, you don't need it. I don't. I don't think because uh, the trailer's not even. The boat's not even touching the board back here. But anyways, uh, most important thing that I can tell you is uh, when you go to wrap your carpet around the boards and fasten it, do not wrap carpet all the way around and cover the whole bottom of the board. Okay, that's why. That's why the majority of bunk boards rot out is people will wrap the carpet all the way around and overlap it here and then once it gets wet it traps the water in there and that water can't escape. That water will sit in there and it will rot away at the bunk boards, okay? That's why the ones from my, on my boat rotted out. So whoever the guy is at Easy Loader that thought it would be funny to wrap the carpet all the way around my bunk boards and not use treated lumber, you owe me a 12 pack of beer and a holiday weekend and $250 because that's what I've got invested in this. But anyways, moving forward, one thing that we used that was definitely a big help is uh, some high strength spray adhesive. Okay, what I did was I laid the carpet out and I went ahead and marked out my strips. And I marked out bins at a, a two by four is an inch and a half thick and it's three and a half inches wide. I allowed for two and a half inches on this side, three and a half inches here, and two and a half inches on this side. And what that did was it allowed me just enough to curl it over the sides on the bottom and I could staple it here as well as on the sides. Okay, so this is still open where, like I said, the water can drain out. 
but it gave me just one more place I could staple and uh, help hold the carpet tight. So what we did was once I ripped or once I cut my cut my carpet into strips, I marked out where the two by four was supposed to sit and marking it out on the bottom of the carpet, took the two by four and set it back and I took the spray adhesive and I sprayed real heavily the spot where the two by four was gonna sit. Then with some help from my wife, we took the two by four and we set it right down in place you know, right where it's going to go and we put a lot of pressure on that 2 by 4 Let them set for about 10 minutes and the, now how well the carpet stuck to the 2x4, I don't know. But what I do know <coughs> is that it, it held it in place enough to where now we can come around the sides and pull the carpet up and staple it without worrying about the carpet slipping and getting out of place. Now that, now that it's stapled, I really don't care if, that's, if that adhesive is holding it or not because the staples are. But for getting them built, the spray adhesive, uh, it was, I mean, 11 bucks for that can and it was well worth it because it would have been a lot more difficult had we not used that. Um, stainless steel staples, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. You don't want to go back with just standard staples, okay? It, it, they're in the water all the time, they're in treated lumber, it's not going to last. Go back with uh, stainless steel. Stainless steel still can rest, but it's going to last you a heck of a lot longer than if you just go back with the cheap staples, okay? Again, uh, total cost was somewhere in the $200 to $250 range. Um, that's everything, that's lumber, that's carpet, that's staples. Uh, I actually bought an electric staple gun, that's not even necessary, but uh, spray adhesive, pretty much everything you're going to need, okay? So, uh, like I said, it's not on a difficulty scale of 1 to 10, I put it somewhere around 3. I mean, it's really not hard. Uh, if you can read a tape measure, you can run a pencil, and you can run a skill saw, uh, pretty good chance you guys can pull this off on your own. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to throw these in the truck, go hook up the boat, and we're going to head to the lake. And I'm going to get the boat off the trailer, and uh, then the, the easy part should start. Just pulling the old ones off, putting these on, and uh, we'll take you guys along for that and kind of show you part of the installation and uh, how easy it is. And, and uh, get you guys, we'll get these installed and let you guys see how to go about it. So hang tight, and we'll be with you guys in a minute. Okay guys, uh, we're here at the lake, got the boat off the trailer, you can see the bunk boards are wet. Uh, as you look, right here is the one that's broke, uh, the rest of them are in pretty bad shape. So uh, fortunately, we're able to uh, just come to the lake, it's not very far from the house, and get the boat off the trailer. Um, if that's not an option for you guys, um, I've seen online where some people have been able to use some jacks and some 4x4 uh, four four blocks. and. Uh, come up with a way where they can get the boat lifted off the trailer just enough that they can do this in their driveway. Uh, the risk versus reward on that didn't make a lot of sense to me considering we're pretty close to the lake so we went ahead and just come here rather than take a chance on on uh, something going wrong and dropping the boat. But anyways, uh, next thing we got to do, you see these brackets? There's On these long boards there's three brackets, short boards there's two. Uh, each bracket's got two lag screws coming through it up into the bunk boards. So I'm going to pull those off and get these old boards out of the way and we'll start replacing them. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these yanked off and uh, once we get these taken off, then we'll show you guys the next step going forward uh, as far as replacing the bunk boards. So uh, I guess you stay tuned and as soon as we get this done, we'll be right back. Okay guys, I got the uh, all the lag screws pulled out of the bunk boards. Um, like I said earlier, I was able to, last time I was at the lake when I seen that that board was broken, I was able to go ahead and take my measurements and get my boards pre-cut and everything uh, all at one time without having to worry about taking the boat back off the trailer. Um, when I did that, the long boards of mine were, I want to say like 9 foot 8, short boards are like 5 foot 7 or whatever. So um, The other thing I did when I got ready to take the bolts out of the boards was I went ahead and took a tape measure and I measured the distance between the brackets and the front of the boards uh, because I know that I know that my new boards are the same length as the old boards so when I do that that'll give me a uh, way to make sure that the boards are going to be sitting in the right place um, now what I'm going to do I'm going to leave all these boards set like they are and I'm only going to take off the one I'm going to replace okay that'll help uh, limit the confusion if I took all of them off it kind of opens up the door for some kind of confusion forgetting what goes where um, 
pretty straightforward, but just take your time, take all the measurements you need, write them down, and uh, you know, it, it, there's really not a whole lot to it. So right now I'm gonna start replacing boards and we'll, we'll step forward from there. Okay guys, uh, we got the first bunk board pulled off, got the new bunk board here in place. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, it's not a necessity, but if you've got them, it sure will make things a lot easier, is clamps. Uh, it doesn't really matter what kind of clamps you want to use, C-clamps, uh, th these clamps here are, are uh, what I had laying around, they'll work great. Um, basically all you want to do is be sure you get everything centered in place, clamp it on both ends, that way you know it's, it's going to stay there. The next thing I'm going to have to do is uh, I'm going to get a small drill bit and just drill a pilot hole through the bracket, through my hole that's already in the bracket, into the board. That way when I go to run my lag screw in there, uh, I'm not going to have to worry about splitting the board out. And uh, one more tip that I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. When I go to run the uh, go to run the bolt, the lag screws into the bunk boards, is I'm going to take them and then I'm going to dip them in, in uh, Vaseline. Um, silly as it sounds, it's petroleum, it's oil. It's going to help repel water. And as it goes in, that Vaseline is going to go ahead and just kind of ooze out, and it's going to help seal that hole a little bit. I'm not saying it's going to be a lifesaver and it's going to going to last forever, but it's definitely not going to hurt anything. So. Uh, now I'm going to get, get back to work and I'm going to go ahead and start getting some of these bunk boards screwed down. Okay guys, uh, one precautionary measure you need to take since we're going back with treated lumber. Uh, you, not, the chemicals in treated lumber, like I said earlier, can eat away at metal. Uh, that's why we're going to go with stainless hardware. Um, these brackets right here on the boat are not, are not stainless and, and uh, over time the contact from the treated lumber with these brackets it would take a toll on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm making basically like a gasket of sorts out of a uh, bicycle tire inner tube. I'm going to cut it, cut it to fit over the bracket, and then that's going to be between the bunk board and the bracket itself. Okay, that's going to keep the uh, that's going to keep the treated lumber from ever being in contact with that metal. All right. Hey guys, that's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, got them all bolted down. I uh, went ahead, like I said, coated all the lag screws in Vaseline. Just kind of help ooze out and seal those holes, keep the water out of them. Um, I mean, really, the biggest steps that, that uh, I, would, I would recommend you guys not overlook is some kind of a barrier between the, uh, between the treated lumber and your metal brackets. Like I said, we used uh, inner, uh, inner tube from a bicycle tire. Um, so there's two. I mean, total total install time. I'd say once we got here to the lake and got the boat off the trailer, maybe 30, 45 minutes at the most of you know of working. So it's not hard. Like I said, it's uh probably between two and three hundred dollars total is what we got invested in new bunk boards. So I mean, it's not an astronomical amount of money, but it's enough money that you definitely want to make sure you do it right. So I hope this this video helps you guys. If you guys need to replace your bunk boards, uh, helps give you guys uh, the confidence to do it right and. Uh, Go ahead, because I mean, you can you can buy pre-made bunk boards, but you know, like like anything else, I mean, if somebody's not making it for their boat, you don't know what kind of care was taken when they made it, what kind of components they used. I mean, we use the best carpet you can get, stainless steel staples. Um, it's it, you know really really well made bunk boards right now, and uh, we did it for probably just a touch over what you would pay to go buy one from the store that probably wouldn't last near as long. So you know, I, I recommend if you guys are at all handy doing it yourself there's not a whole lot to it just take care you know and, and uh, you know measure measure twice and cut once um, I, you'll, you'll probably hear uh, a lot of opinions on there's, there's there's a lot of opinions everybody's got a different opinion on what material should be used uh, what method to do it a lot of people like to drill plumb through the through the board and use a, a bolt and through bolt it and there's nothing wrong with that um, I just decided to go back with lag lag screws <clears throat> excuse me because that's what was on the, the trailer to begin with and uh, we're kind of under the gun right now with weather. It just seemed like the smartest thing to do as far as, you know, time-wise. And, you know, I, I would be really, really surprised if 10 years from now, 12 years from now, we weren't still running the same bunk boards on this trailer. So um, I hope you guys liked the video. Check out the website. Watch all the other videos. Um, drop us an email. Let us know if you've got any ideas for videos you'd like to see. So uh, until next time, thank you guys for watching.